Hello, I'm Dr. Manor Haas. I'm a certified endodontist from Toronto, Canada. In this segment, I would like to discuss and clarify some misconceptions about Gatacor obturation. These include retreatment of Gatacor, obturation of curved canals, post paste preparation, and excessive armamentarium. One common misconception is that Gatacor can't be retreated easily. As far as I'm concerned, anyone that says this obviously hasn't worked with Gatacor. If you can retreat any gutta percha obturation, then you can retreat gutta core. There's no plastic or metal core in the gutta core, so it's really no different. It's all gutta percha, so this is not an issue at all. Another misconception is that gutta core can't obturate curved canals. The way that gutta core is designed, it can absolutely obturate curved canals. This is simply a misconception that I personally believe has been made by people who haven't tried gutta core. This and other cases demonstrate the ease with which gutta core manages curved canals. This is not an issue. Often, dentists think that post-paste preparations are difficult and require a post-prep kit. Once again, if you can prepare a post-space in a canal obturated with any gutta percha system, then you can prepare a post-space with gutta core. Since gutta core is all gutta percha, it's no different and does not require any special post-prep kits. In this case, I simply used a piezo reamer, nothing special. Another misconception is that using gutta core is more difficult than traditional warm vertical obturation. This couldn't be further from the truth. For instance, traditional warm vertical downpack obturation techniques require far more steps and are much more technique sensitive. I'm really oversimplifying it, but they would require the following. A master gutta percha cone, searing off the cone, and backfilling the canal are, in my opinion, far, far more difficult to perform and perfect than using a short and warm gutta percha point on a carrier. And, in my opinion, they have a much more difficult learning curve. Along with a greater number of steps required for traditional warm obturations, they're also much more likely to result in obturation and plugger voids. This is shown in the following x-rays. A final misconception I'd like to discuss is that gutta core requires extensive setup and armamentarium. This is actually quite the opposite. Let me point out what is required for traditional warm vertical obturation. You know, master gutta percha cone, multiple pluggers, warm obturation delivery unit with the gutta percha pellets or carpules and a hot tip instrument. Now compare this with what is needed for gutta core obturation. An oven, a gutta core cone, and a cotton plier. That's it. As a recap, you've now seen how retreatment of gutta core is not an issue. If you can retreat gutta percha filled canals, then you can retreat gutta core. The same is not true for canals obturated with gutta percha and plastic carriers. As for obturating curved canals, well, the cases shown demonstrate how beautifully gutta core can obturate curved canals. Furthermore, post space preparation of gutta core obturations is as easy as with traditional gutta percha obturations. To this I'd like to add that post space preparation and other carrier based obturations, ones that have plastic core, is anything but simple and unlike with gutta core, they do require special post space kits. The beauty of this obturation technique is in its simplicity and engineering. In my opinion, this simplicity and great engineering make the gutta core system the most predictable and efficient obturation system on the market. I hope you found this useful. Good luck and thank you for your time.